Happy Hump Day, guys. Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. You're watching The Daily Mix TV. Hi, my name is Sean Patrick Hillman. Merchants could face higher credit card transaction fees next month in April when Visa and MasterCard are expected to raise interchange fees on some purchases, according to the Wall Street Journal. Apparently, Visa is looking to increase fees for online transactions at restaurants, while MasterCard is expected to do the same for purchases made at smaller supermarkets. The problem for them is small merchants often ask their consumers to pay with cash to avoid that interchange fee charged by the bank. But the pandemic has forced their hand as people now conduct almost all shopping digitally. So whether that's contactless or using swipe or insert. So rather than supporting these businesses to help them grow, they're now actually gonna penalize them by increasing fees. Now, this comes from two companies that claim to be good corporate citizens, and here's why I raise this point. Remember, folks, small business has been the backbone of the American economy for 244 years, ever since the founding of this country. And in a few months, it'll be 245 years. Herein lies the problem, though. Small business employs more people in this country than the Fortune 500. So when you compound cost over, you know, imagery, okay, based on what Visa and MasterCard position themselves to be, that's a big problem for them from an optic standpoint. So the reality is that companies like Visa and MasterCard, they don't care, despite the tens of millions of dollars they spend on antiquated but effective social responsibility platforms that are only designed to distract from the amazing amount of profit they generate every year. As an example, MasterCard has the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth. On its face, it's a brilliant strategy. It's a really good will effort. According to their own website, the Center for Inclusive Growth advances equitable and sustainable economic growth and financial inclusion around the world. The center leverages the company's core assets and competencies, including data insights, expertise, and technology, while administering the philanthropic MasterCard Impact Fund to produce independent research, scale global programs, and empower a community of thinkers, leaders, and doers on the front lines of inclusive growth. Wow, is that a mouthful. So how do you possibly empower an entire category of small businesses whose members are comprised of large concentrations of business owners of people of color in the way that you're talking about while also increasing their fees? The answer is you can't, and they're a bunch of hypocrites. And I say that because, you know, I was just in a bodega yesterday, and I was using Apple Pay, which is tied to my debit card. And on the table, it says, you know, if you use cash, we forsake the 3.4% fee or whatever the fee percentage was. And I sat there thinking to myself, okay, you know, this, this is a recent phenomena, okay? Only in the last couple of years has this really started to blossom in a place like New York City, where small businesses are putting up these signs. It was something that was passed by the city allowing uh, shop owners to actually charge more based on those swipe fees. So for them to be able to charge that, and now MasterCard and Visa are going to increase those fees alone, that's just not right. And that, that's, that's really bad news. I'm hoping people start to return to cash because, quite frankly, especially when you get from an equality standpoint, which MasterCard claims to, to support, uh, cash is king. So only time will tell. We'll keep an eye on it for you. Senate Democrats jettisoned a plan to tax companies unless they raise the minimum wage to $15, which means that the chamber will vote on the $1.9 trillion stimulus package without the increase. And that's according to The Wall Street Journal as well. This move follows earlier opposition by the Senate parliamentarian to include the wage provision in what is a budget reconciliation process. In other words, because of the way the House and the Senate are voting for this, which is a straight vote rather than based on party, they can't include items like a minimum wage increase. It's got to focus on COVID. Now, we know that there's a lot of pork that's padded into this. Despite this, remember, the House passed the bill with the increase on Saturday. The Senate stripped it yesterday. As a matter of fact, the Senate also stripped Nancy Pelosi's tunnel project outside of Silicon Valley because you know, it just didn't belong in the bill. Now, if the Senate passes this measure without it, 
The bill could face opposition by House liberals in a final vote. So what does all of this include and why am I talking about it on The Daily Mix TV? The bill includes payments of $1,400, the stimulus checks to most individuals. It adds a $400 per week unemployment supplement through August 29th. So I shouldn't say it adds, it just uh, elongates the time period. There's a $25 billion uh, spend in here for assistance in covering rent, rent payments, and then $170 billion for K-12 schools and higher education institutions to cover reopening costs and aid to students. So here's the question I have. The math doesn't add up, okay? If you're looking at this from a real, honest point of view, forget partisan politics, forget Democrats, forget Republicans. This affects every single American and every single business. And the optics on this from a marketing standpoint are completely out the window. Because, you know, I'm hearing from, you know, Senate Republicans or, excuse me, House Republicans that they were unable to really read the 600-page bill in order to defend pieces they wanted to pull out. And it's the belief of the right that the left has included a lot of pork in this in this bill. And it happens to be true. And, and again, this is not a Republican thing or a Democrat thing. It's an American thing. If you're going to position a bill to be COVID relief, more than 9% of it should be COVID relief. Unfortunately, this entire $1.9 trillion spent really is only about 9% dedicated to COVID. So I'm hoping that common sense wins out overall. I'm hoping that in the Senate... They continue to strip out the pork from this from this bill because it really is bloated and it's kicking the can down the road, in which case future generations are going to be paying down this debt for a very long time. You guys know how much I love brands and companies that collaborate with like-minded entities in different categories. It opens up a world of opportunity. Well, one of my favorite brands that does this every single year is Sally Hansen, and boy, did they not disappoint. They've saddled up with perennial candy favorite, Mentos. The two companies have joined forces to launch a collection of limited edition quick dry nail polishes that will bring some added freshness to manicures. So when you go for that mani-pedi, just remember to ask for the Sally Hansen Insta-Dry Mentos collection. Comprised of eight shades with color-matched tops, the collection features pastels, glitter, cream, and bright hues. Quote, Sally Hansen Insta-Dry Mentos pairs two iconic brands in an irresistibly sweet collaboration. Together, we've brought the fun, freshness, and fruitiness to the nail polish category just in time for spring. And that's Celia Tombalakian, who's the VP of Global Marketing for Sally Hansen. Now, the shades that you can choose from, the Fresh Maker, um, Confection Perfection, You're the Zest, Orange You a Peach, uh, Fuchsia Fizz, Cutie Fruity, Peppermint Dandy, and Mint to Be. Love it. Brilliant play on names. Uh, the Sally Hansen Insta-Dry Mentos collection retails for about $5 each, and they can be found at Change Rug nationwide. So let's peel back some of the layers of this onion, okay? There's a lot going on with, with Sally Hansen. Brilliant company, always has been in terms of collaborations and marketing, especially in the last decade. When you get into a program like this, now let's talk about Change Rug. Walgreens, CVS, in New York, you got Dwayne Reed, you got Rite Aid, and so on and so forth. Sally Hansen's found at literally every single one of those. So the opportunity for Sally Hansen to capitalize on Mentos' shelf is a smart strategy if they're able to pull it off. So if I were the marketer in charge of this, I'd put shelf talkers in the candy aisle, you know, pointing back to the beauty section and vice versa to the advantage for Mentos. So where Sally Hansen is in the beauty section, I would point back to the candy aisle. I would also, from a marketing standpoint, looking at PR, the value you drive in announcing a collaboration like this is massive. Then lastly, there's the point of purchase or point of sale impulse buy, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago uh, with respect to my friend Joe Magnaca, who created the Look Boutique at uh, Dwayne Reed and certainly the convenience format at Dwayne Reed as well. So thinking about those things, you've got an opportunity to do a promo at point of sale at the register for an impulse buy. All of these things together, Sally Hansen already knows. I'm telling you this so that you understand why companies do these kinds of collaborations. First of all, it's flat out fun. 
Second of all, the sales revenue on something like this, because Mentos is such a popular brand, makes all the sense in the world. Congratulations, Sally Hansen. Brilliant marketing platform. All right, remember yesterday when I said this time of year for ice cream and novelty announcements is going to be robust. Well, here's one that we didn't expect. There's a new twist on the classic M&M's ice cream cookie sandwich. The Mars Wrigley owned brand announced the launch of a new minty flavor of the sweet treat, as well as a classic variety. Featuring mint flavored ice cream, the M&M's mint ice cream cookie sandwich also contains two chocolate cookies with milk chocolate M&M's minis. On the other hand, the M&M's classic ice cream cookie sandwich contains vanilla ice cream that's sandwiched between two chocolate cookies with milk chocolate M&M's that have been baked throughout. And that's all according to the company. Quote, we're excited to expand the joy of M&M's color works to the Mars Wrigley ice cream line, starting with a minty green treat for St. Patrick's Day. These new flavors add even more options alongside our favorite M&M's vanilla and chocolate cookie sandwiches offering a fun and enjoyable treat for any occasion. And that's J- uh, J.S. Shaw, who's the Mars Ice Cream Marketing Director. Now, consumers can find both varieties in packs of four at retail locations throughout the month. Remember, guys, in today's the third, so two weeks from today is Sean Patrick's Day. I mean, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, sorry, had to do it. Uh, when you look at promo around St. Patrick's Day, typically you think about... Uh, the Shamrock Shake at McDonald's, which I'm, I'm sure the cancel culture will go after eventually. Uh, sorry, I'm a little annoyed by those people. But when you look at what's going on, in terms of St. Patrick's Day this year, you've already got a lot of local parades that have been canceled. Word has not come down about the New York parade yet. Uh, from what I understand, they're expecting to put it on in a smaller format. But we'll keep an eye on it for you. In terms of M&M's and ice cream... They've been doing this a long time. This is not something new. The flavor profiles are different for sure and very cool in terms of flavor development. The distribution is standard. But from a promo perspective, for them to go after St. Patrick's Day, which is kind of cute, I think is a different and interesting strategy. So I'm going to be interested to see how that nets out. We'll keep an eye on it for you. All right, for this week's Way Back Wednesday, do you remember this? Here is the terrifically talented ensemble from Jonathan Larson's Rent. That's right, this year we celebrate the 25th anniversary of one of Broadway's biggest hits, Rent. Rent is a rock musical by Jonathan Larson. It's loosely based on Puccini's 1896 opera, La Boheme. It tells the story of a group of impoverished young artists struggling to survive and create a life in Lower Manhattan's East Village in the thriving days of Bohemian Alphabet City, under the shadow of the HIV-AIDS epidemic. Rent started out as an off-Broadway show at the New York Theater Workshop, and in a very, very short period of time, within that year, Rent moved on to the Great White Way to have a 12-year run, becoming one of Broadway's longest-running shows. Tony after Tony and acclamation after acclamation, Rent changed the lives of so many and inspired so many more. Sadly, the show's creator, Jonathan Larson, passed away the evening before its premiere, So he never got to see the phenomena that he created and how it impacted millions of people, myself very much included. You know, back in the 80s, I, because because of my mother, who was a socialite, she owned a PR firm, she, um, she had a lot, a lot of friends in the gay community. And as such, I grew up with that. And watching, watching many of them die because of the HIV AIDS epidemic was... It was horrible. And 
knowing now, you know, knowing what we know now, I wish we knew it then, uh, you know, shows like Rent really helped to explain what was going on in our childhood for Generation X. So, I'm, um, you know, I, I've been a big fan of Jonathan Larson ever since I saw Rent for the first time and I was there on opening night on The Great White Way. When you think about the fact that it was made into a movie in the early 2000s and how brilliant a movie it was, you think about the phenomena that Rent was and still is to this day. Very, very cool. And, and God, I wish Jonathan Larson could have seen the impact that he had on so many. In closing, two weeks ago, I teased the premiere of Superman and Lois on the CW network. Now, while I had high expectations of the show... Nothing could have prepared me for how actually incredible it was. So much so that the CW announced yesterday, ahead of its second episode airing, that they were giving the series a renewal for a second season. Wow. Blow away show, bl brilliantly written, acted, and planned. Can't wait to see what they have in store for us. And today's cufflinks are the gold indicia from the House of L. Uh, you know, yes, I'm a Superman dork. What can I tell you? I'm a geek. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or story ideas, please email TV at gmail.com. I'm out of time, folks. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. We'll see you tomorrow on Thursday.